The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Tremaine. Hello. Yes, it's the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marsha, I'm glad you called. But I don't see how I can make it tonight, Angel. I have to locate a girl. Is she attractive? Well, I know one guy who fell for her. Did he fall hard? They're burying him tomorrow. Once again, the Mutual Broadcasting System brings you the adventures of the Falcon. One thing about Michael Waring, the Falcon, he certainly gets around. You met him first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. And now we're happy to bring you again his adventures on the air. Yes, it's Michael Waring, that freelance detective who's always ready with a hand for oppressed men and an eye for repressed women. So join him tonight when the Falcon learns... Murder is a knockout. It's 10.30 at night in New York, and in Madison Square Garden... The sixth round of the main event is underway. At the ringside, blonde Kay Davis looks from the fighters to her escort, Vic Jones, whose good-looking but rather weak face is chalk white as he sees the boy he is rooting for taking a bad licking. Come on, Wallace. Keep that left up. Keep it up. Oh. This would like to finish. Come on, Wallace. One, two, three. Oh, don't disturb him. This he needs his Get up, That does it. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to let me have five bills. What gave you that idea? I was on Walter's. I wasn't. Oh, now, don't be like that, baby. Come on, now on, Vic. That's exactly how I'm going to be. I've played sucker long enough. i got to have that dough, Kay. What's the matter? You've got a broken leg. You want money? Work for it. I'm going to have plenty, but it'll take a little time. I have a lot of irons in the fire. You have one iron in the fire. Me. And I'm tired of getting burned. Okay, baby, you figure you got burned. So now you want to chill? Well, that's just what you're going to get. Anyway, it was nice knowing. Now, wait a minute, Vic. I'm not asking for a sign-off. That's what you think. And I was right. About what? You were only using me for what you could get out of me. If there weren't people around here, I'd kick your teeth in for that. Because I'm right. Oh, uh, what are we fighting for, kid? You know, it's you and me no matter what. We we can't help ourselves. It's just Wait a minute. Huh? Oh, what's the matter? Let's get out of here quick. What is it? Come on. We'll be aisle jam. Well, we can push our way through. Uh, Excuse me, please. Uh, Hurry up, Vic. Well, what goes? You see that character over there, the one on the gray hat? He's looking this way. Huh? Well, what about him? He works for Alexa. Oh, you think he saw you? I know he did. That's why he's here. Alexo knows I like to fight. Yeah. We'll have to shake him, Vic. He'll want to trail me and find out where I live. Is he following? I, I, I don't know. I, I can't see him now. Oh, good. And that means he can't see us either. No. Well, we can only keep it that way. We'll be all right. <laughs> How do you know my name? Kay pointed you out at the fight tonight. Sorry she couldn't stay around to see you, but she wasn't feeling sociable. She went home. Uh, I followed you. What do you want? Alexo, is he here? No. Doesn't get in until tomorrow morning. What do you want to see him about? I have a um, proposition for him. He's looking for Kay. I, I know where he can find her. Come on in. I'm handling things for Alexa. You can talk to me. Right. What's your name? Jones. Vic Jones. And what's your proposition? 500 on the line. That's kind of steep. Oh, I wouldn't say so. When Kay pulled out, out of L.A., she took 75000 of Alexa's money with her. Five C's isn't much to get it back. I'll find her sooner or later, whether you help or not. Yeah, sure, but while you're looking, she'll be dipping into the 75 grand. She could uh, burn up a lot more than five bills before you reach her. Hmm. Got a point. Well, do we do business? Or I don't. All right, Jones. The deal.
now floating gate three. All aboard, flight nine, please. I like so. Here I am. Oh, hello, Hagen. How was the trip? So, so. How are things going? Got anything on the girl? Not yet. Nothing? Tried to fight? Yeah, if she was there, I didn't see her. Don't think she's in New York. A detective in Chicago saw her buy a ticket to New York. Maybe she went on through. Florida, maybe. I think she's here. I wouldn't have come all the way from L.A. if I wasn't pretty sure. Well, what should we do? I've already wired Mike Waring. The Falcon? Yep. You don't want that bird snooping into your activities? He won't. All I'm going to have him do is locate the girl. Well, I don't like it. You know, Hagen, sometimes I get the idea you don't want me to find Kay. What? Now, look, Alexo, I turned the town inside out trying to find her. I hope you did. Because if I find out you are lying, you are the one that's going to be turned inside out. How do you do, Mr. Ring? Hello. You must be Alexo. That's right. Come in. Nice trip. Not bad. Well, uh, what can I do for you? I, uh, I want you to find my sister. So you said in your wire. What can you give me on her? Uh, here's a picture. Mm. When did you last see her? In Los Angeles two weeks ago. And she disappeared without any warning. Yes. Yeah. Do you have any reason to run away? What did I know of? What makes you think she's in New York? Well, I thought she might have gone to Chicago. Why? She used to live there, so I sent her picture to a Chicago detective. He located her, but before I could get there, she bought a ticket to New York and paid it again. Have you notified the police? No, I don't want her to get the idea. I think she's done anything wrong. Why are you smiling, Mr. Wayne? I didn't realize I was. So, you have a detective looking for her in Chicago and me in New York. Anybody else? Well, some of my boys are looking for her. Boys? The fellows who work for me. Doing what? They work for me in my business. What is your business? What's that got to do with this? You never know. Look, Waring, I didn't come here for a third degree. You came here to get me to find someone for you, so I have to know things about her. And you. What do you want to know? Why you've been lying to me? Hmm? You say you haven't any idea why she disappeared, but still you're sure right away it's a long-distance fade-out. You don't want the police in it. You burn when I ask what business you're in. I don't like the way it adds up. All right, Waring. You don't want the job. Sorry I bothered you. Who says I don't want the job? You just said... I said you were lying. But if that picture does the girl justice, I still could be persuaded to look for her. You know something, Waring? Somehow I don't think I'll try to persuade you. You know something, Alexa? Somehow I didn't think you would. <laughs> How come a girl of your looks is eating alone? Maybe I like it that way. Nobody likes to eat alone. I'll join you. How did you know where to find me? Maybe I followed you last night to find out where you stand. Not unless you're invisible. I made sure I wasn't followed. Well, here I am. So I see. What would you do if I told you Alexo's in town? What? Does he know where I am? Not yet. Thank heaven. Don't thank heaven, thank me, Kay. And I know just how you can show your gratitude. Oh, you do? Yeah. You have 75 grand of Alexo's money, but I'm a generous guy. I'll let you keep 50 of it. Thank you, Hagen. Don't mention it. I'll finish your lunch. We'll go pick up my 25. Don't I get time to think it over? What do you have to think? You either want to keep 50,000 or you keep nothing. All right. I'll bring you the money tonight. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not letting you out of my sight till I have the cash in my hand. I'm not giving you a chance to run away again. You don't miss any tricks, do you? I can't afford to. I bid a grand slam. Believe me, Kay, I'm going to make it. What's the idea of going in the alley? There's no parking places on the street, so I leave the car here and go in the back way. Oh. Okay. Go get the dump. All right. Wait a minute. You're parked too close to the building. I can't get out here. Well, slide over. You can get out on this side. I'll get out first. Okay. I hope you don't have the bright idea that you can make a break for it while I'm trying to get out, because if you do, I'm... Oh! Oh, oh, hello, 
okay. You dirty rat. Huh? What's the matter? You know what's the matter. Get out of my way. I'm coming in. Well, I, I, I don't know if you'd only tell me. I suppose you didn't tip Hagen where to find me. What? Well, why would I do that? You did it. You must know why. Hey, wait a minute. Well, where'd you get that gun? From Hagen. How? He tried to make a deal with me. 25000 not to tip Electro. I played alone. Well, what happened? We drove into the alley behind my building. He was getting out of the car. I clouded him with a flashlight. Then I got his gun. <laughs> You're quite a girl. I can take care of myself. And I can take care of anybody who tries to cross me. I didn't cross you, baby. you got to believe that. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, Alexo still doesn't know where I am. And you are not tipping oh, me. Of course I won't. I'm glad we agreed on that. But just to make no, sure... Wait. Now, don't. Be, be careful with that gun. Stand right where you are. Okay. Don't try to get to that window. You're not getting out of here. Well, there's... There's always the window. <laughs> a great stunt you pulled. Yeah, lucky I only live on the second floor. Anyway, it was better than getting shot. I wasn't going to shoot you. Well, it looked like it. All I wanted Never was... Never mind that now. All right. What do you want? I've been looking for Hagen. Finally found him. You did? Yeah, he's still in the alley where you left him. You sure pack a wallop. I gave him everything I could. You sure did. Well, why are you calling? I thought I ought to tip you off. Even if you do think I double-crossed you. Tip me off to what? Police have already found Hagen. If you're going to blow, you'll have to hurry. Why should I blow? Well, you have a story ready in case they call on you? They're not calling on me. Hagen won't tell them anything about me. I know too much about him and Alexa. You're right, Hagen won't tell the police anything. But the reason he won't tell them isn't that he's afraid. It's that he's dead. <laughs> When sudden death calls, wearing a white tie and leaving a calling card in the form of a 45 caliber slug, it's frequently just another case for the falcon. But when wholesale disaster threatens a community, that's the time when everyone thinks in terms of the Red Cross. The 1949 Red Cross campaign has set its sights on the sum of $60 million to assault the problems that lie ahead this year. The increased total of disasters in the last year, the expanding national blood program, the large number of community services... All these require greater Red Cross efforts, made possible only by the financial support and volunteer participation of the people. Remember this. You, through your contributions and voluntary action, are the Red Cross, providing a channel through which compassion and mercy find expression in the relief of human suffering. You, too, can help through your Red Cross. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's a couple of hours since the body of Hagen was found in an alley behind the apartment house where Kay Davis lives. Now, Peter Alexo, the client whom Mike Waring had rejected, is once again at Waring's door. Oh, it's you again, Alexo. Yes, may I come in? I want to talk to you. Okay. All right, what is it? Waring, I don't suppose I could persuade you to forget my visit to you this morning. Persuade me how? Uh, money. Why? I have my reasons. What would it cost for you to forget that you ever saw me? Sorry, Alexo, my memory's too good. Yeah. I was afraid you'd take this attitude. Well, then, Waring, there's just one thing to do. Got to be cards on the table. Well, it's about time. Waring, um, that girl I wanted you to find. Yes? She is not my sister. <laughs> Surprise. She was my girlfriend. Ran away with another man. I want her back. Mm hmm. But I don't intend to risk a murder rap to get her. Where does murder come in? I had one of my boys, Joey Hagen, looking for Kay. Seems he found her. According to the paper, he's been murdered. And you figure she did it? I don't know, Waring. How about her boyfriend? A possibility. I want you to look into it. All right. As long as you don't start acting coy again. I can't now. The police are bound to find out Hagen was on my payroll. You figure the police will think you killed him. If we don't find the girl, I'm the only person in New York who had any connection with him. Uh-huh. What I'd like would be to hop a plane back to the coast and make like I've never been here. But that would require your cooperation. I haven't been able to buy that. So your next best bet is to get me to crack the case for you. Or at least find Kay. Only now, whatever I find out, I turn over to the police instead of to you. Whatever you say. All right, Alexo. 
I'll do what I can. Good. I wish you luck. Thanks. And considering what happened to the last fellow who tracked down your girl for you, I'm going to need it. Homicide squad, Lieutenant Gleason speaking. Hello, Gleason. Mike Waring. Sorry, Waring, we don't have a thing for you. How do you know? You don't know what I want. I know what we've got. Oh, you're too modest. You ought to be able to give me something on the Hagen case. Well, I told don't you, you I don't... Don't you have any suspects? A girl, but... A girl? Could... Gleason, you interest me strangely. Well, before you start dancing in the streets, Waring, we don't have very much on her, only that Hagen was found in an alley behind the building where she lives. Her address was in his pocket, but... She claims she didn't know him. We can't prove different. We'll check him, but... Never mind that. What does she look like? Blonde, bleached, about 5'5", five, five, good-looking, but a little on the husky side for a dame. That's enough, Gleason. Where can I find her? Uh, at home, I guess. We're not holding her yet. But what goes, Mike? I'll let you know after I've seen her. And if she's who I think she is, the answer to your question is plenty. <laughs> What do you want? You are. And what? The girl in the picture. What picture? That Alexo showed me. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any Alexo. Well, uh, let me come in and I'll tell you all about no, it. No, you don't. All right. Then I go to the police and tell them that the Karen Dorrance they questioned is really Kay Davis of Los Angeles. And Joey Hagen came to New York for the express purpose of finding her. You win. Come in. Thanks. And now, Mr... Waring. Mike Waring. The Fulton. You're working for Alexo. Mm-hmm. The police know about him yet? Not yet. But I'll have to turn what I have over to them pretty soon. I don't think you will. Hey, that's not very smart, pulling a gun. You're not going to talk. All right. I don't talk. The police have a corpse. They'll check on its background. It'll lead them to Alexo, and that'll lead them to you. I don't know what to do. I have to have time to think. <laughs> Should have thought before you killed Hagen. I didn't kill him. He came here to see you. Yes. And you didn't want him to report back to Alexo. He wasn't going to report back. Why not? He wanted me to pay him not to. Oh. And you agreed. I was going to think it over. But uh, killing him was a cheaper out. I tell you, I didn't kill him. I want to ask you something, Mr. Waring. Go ahead. What is Alexo paying you? Why? Whatever it is, I'll double it if you'll work for me. Sounds like the same deal Hagen got. And look what happened to him. No. No, I've given up trying to get away from Alexo. I, I see it's no use. But I'm in a spot with a murder. Maybe you can help clear me. Maybe. Unless you're guilty. I'm not. Well, what do you say? All right, Kay. You've hired yourself a detective. <laughs> You must be Vic Jones. Uh, who are you? Mike Waring. What do you want? You. If you are, Jones. You fit Kay's description. I've been waiting in front of the building for you to come home. Kay sent you? I'm working for her. Why did she send you here? As a matter of fact, she didn't. That was my idea. She wants me to work on the Hagen case. I thought you might know something. What would I know? Plenty. If you're the murderer. What? Why would I want to kill Hagen? You wanted Kay for yourself. Alexa wanted her back. Hagen found her for him. You could have killed Hagen to keep him from reporting. Uh, there's only one trouble with that, Waring. Yeah, what? Kay and I had already split up last night. So why should I care if Alexo found her? Well, it looks like my client's been holding back on me. Unless you're lying. If you don't believe me, ask Kay. I may do that. But first, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. But let's not stand out here in the street. We can, we can go inside. All right. I, I don't understand, Waring. If... If you're working for Kay, how come you thought I killed Hagen? Why shouldn't I? I didn't know you and she had split up. But didn't she tell you what happened with Hagen? What did happen? Oh, well, if you don't know, I'm not saying. Why? I've had enough trouble with Kay. She thought I tipped Hagen off about her. I think I've convinced her. I, I didn't by now, but I'm not going to give her any other reason to blow up. Oh, yeah. She blew up, huh? Yeah. Well, why did she care if Hagen found her? Since she'd already split with you. On account of the 75 grand. What? What 75 grand? Well, didn't she tell you that either? No. Didn't tell you much. 
Seems not. Well, in that case, there's not much I can do for you either. But if you know anything... Here, here we are. No use, Waring. I'm not talking. So you might as well run along. Oh, no, not yet. Well, I tell you, I'm not going... What's the matter? There's somebody in the bedroom. I'm going to go see. Who's there? I don't hear anything, Jones. Hey, the window's open. The fire escape. See anyone, Jones? I don't know. I don't know. It's dark out there. Wait a minute. There's someone in the courtyard in the shadows. Hey, you down there, stop! Stop! Okay, pal, you ask for it. There's high Western action adventure for you on Mutual's thrilling new radio program, Straight Arrow. For the first time in radio history, a full-blooded American Indian becomes the central figure of a radio drama, a champion of law and order, a dynamic hero in action-packed struggles. The incomparable Straight Arrow presents the vanishing American in his true light. You'll find swift-paced entertainment when you hear the bold and daring Straight Arrow on Mutual. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike Waring and Vic Jones surprised an intruder in Jones's apartment. Now, in another part of town, Kay Davis stands outside the door of a hotel room. Hello, Alexo. This is a surprise. I thought it would be. <laughs> Come in. All right. I see you'll never give up, Alexo, and I'm tired of running. And here I am. Good. Tell me something. Was it me or the money that you were really after? <laughs> Don't you know? You're like a jerk. I'm no Bobby Foxer, but I really had it bad with that crumb, Vic. It's all over now. I'm glad to hear that. Now we can go back and pick up where we left off. Aren't you forgetting something? What? A little matter of murder. Oh, that's, that's right. But I think I know how we can take care of that. Oh. If we play it right, stick together, we ought to be able to pin this on Vic. Jones? Oh. Try this on the side. For 75 grand. Suppose I'm not the one who took it from you. Vic did. And ran off with me. But I didn't know it was your money. Couldn't he say that? Then what? So you weren't really looking for me. You were looking for Vic. The only reason you tried to find me was that I could lead you to Vic. Oh, sure. I get it. Then when Hagen found you, Vic had to kill him to keep me away from the two of you. That's it. It gives him a motive. Yeah. I've already started on it. I planted your briefcase. The one I took the money in, 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 in Vic's apartment tonight. He almost caught me at it, but I got away. Great. I think we can make it stick. Well, well this calls for a drink, beautiful, a, a celebration. Uh-uh. Who's that? I don't know. But whoever it is, remember our story. Sure, kiddo, sure. Hello, Alexo. Thought I ought to report. May I come in? Wearing, of course. Come in. Thanks. Oh, my other client's here, too. Well, good. Hello, Kay. Hello, Mr. Waring. Your other client? Yeah. I have no objection to a double fee, since you both want me to do the same job. Crack Hagen's murder. Oh. Kay, why didn't you tell me you were the one who beat Hagen's head in? What? Who told you that? Vic? Nope. He must have. He's the only one who... Who what? Who knew? Uh, and don't reach for that gun again. Oh, right no, I... I'll take that. Give me that. That's better. As a matter of fact, Kay, nobody told me. But you told me yourself Hagen found you. And he wouldn't have let you get away from him again unless he couldn't help himself. You admitted you didn't pay him. Well, I... I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. I just wanted to knock him out so I could get away. She killed him, but I thought... No, that... no, Alexo, she didn't. What? But she thought she did. That's why she's been so hysterical. What? I've checked with the police. Hagen's head was covered with blood. But there was no blood in the alley where he was found. That means he was killed somewhere else and brought there. But how does that mean that Kate didn't... She wouldn't have planted the body right behind her own apartment building. It would point too directly toward her. Oh, I see. But Vic knew I'd not Hagen out in the alley, so he brought the body there to frame me. It, it was Vic. Not necessarily. Hagen recovered and left. He could have told anyone else what happened. That's right. But who else would have wanted to kill Hagen? How about you, Alexa? 
Me? Hagen double-crossed you? You wanted revenge? You killed him? I didn't. I didn't know about the double-cross. Then you tried to frame Kay. No. It's no use, Alexo. All I need is a few more answers from Kay, and I'll have all the facts I need. And now that she realizes how you tried to frame her, I think she'll give them to me. What is this wearing? I hired you to clear me. You hired me to solve the case, Alexo. And that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Plan to frame me, huh, Will? Oh, that's right, Joan. Oh, I'm sure glad you saw through it. How, how, how did you know Alexa was the murderer? Well, I didn't. I was just uh, feeling my way. First, I eliminated Kay. The body being planted in the alley cleared her. Yeah, yeah, you told me. But then there was one fact I had to get straight. Yeah, what was that? How Alexa and Kay got together. Kay could tell me, but I had to make sure she was telling the truth. And that's why I accused Alexa. What? Yeah. Because if she thought Alexa was the murderer and that he had tried to frame her then she wouldn't try to protect him. So I accused him. And then I asked how Alexo found her. She said he didn't find her, that she went to see him herself tonight. So why? Well, don't you see? Alexo wanted to find Kay and his $75,000. Hagen knew where Kay was, so Alexo would never have killed Hagen until Hagen had talked. And he obviously hadn't talked, because Alexo was still looking for her. Which means Alexo didn't kill Hagen either. But if he didn't... If he didn't, and Kay didn't, that just leaves... Yeah, that's right. You, Jones. Uh, but why would I? I, I told you. tried to kill you because she thought you tipped Hagen off about where to find her. You denied tipping him. You hoped to convince Kay of your denial. But you couldn't if Hagen told her the truth. You killed him to shut him up. Well, there it is. Isn't it a shame, Jones? What? That they went to the trouble of trying to frame you when you were guilty the whole time? <laughs> Death is a one-armed bandit. Death is a one-armed bandit. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when it comes to slot machines, there's more than one way to make a killing. So be sure to listen next week at this time to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music by Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Les Tremaine was starred as the Falcon, with Beverly Roberts as Kay. Russ Dunbar speaking. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Norma. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. There's a party around who's been shown how to parlay a two-bit pocket knife into a killing. So naturally, he's going to make a stab at it. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Curious Cop. In just a moment, another thrilling adventure of the Falcon. But first, a word about an adventure you can have any day in the week, right in your own kitchen. For several weeks now, we've been telling you on this program about Kraft Salad Oil, the wonderful new salad oil created by Kraft that's lighter-bodied because it's super fine. Now, here's a suggestion. Tomorrow, go to your grocers and get a pint or quart bottle of Kraft Salad Oil. Look up your favorite recipe for homemade salad dressing, chiffon cake, or anything else that requires liquid shortening. Then, that night, tomorrow night at dinner, surprise your family with an old favorite made this lighter-bodied, super-fine salad oil way. You'll know the difference, and so will the family. Get Kraft Salad Oil. (laughs) 
And now, the case of the curious cop. It's late Sunday evening in New York, and Hunter's famed gambling club on East 84th is closed for the night. But that doesn't seem to deter plainclothesman Jack Craven or his partner Frank Walsh from their decision to look in on Mr. Hunter. You ask me, Craven, we're wasting our time. You think so, Frank? Sure. Hunter's probably gone. What about that light we saw from the outside? I must have forgotten to turn it off. No, not Mr. Hunter. He watches his pennies. I will get you ten. He's still here counting the tick. Where was the light coming from? Uh... Now, this room here, I think. Yeah. Then this must be the office. Want me to go in with you? No. You wait out here. If you hear any commotion, get back to the car. Understand? Right. Come on in, Brock. Did you get to... For a second, you're not Brock. No, my name is Craven, Mr. Hunter. What are you doing here? Ever see one of these before? It's a badge, isn't it? Also known as a buzzer or a potsy. So? So I don't like people running gambling houses on my beat. I see. Especially without consulting me. And suppose I did consult you? Well, that might be different. Now, if you were to consult me, say, once a week with 500 bucks... You'd have no objections at all? No. Live and let live is my motto. Well, $500 is a lot of money, Mr. Craven. Well, I can be a lot of trouble, Mr. Hunter. Suppose I had you reported to the commissioner. You'd be wasting your time. They've been trying to get rid of me for years, but they never could get anybody to testify against me. Maybe I'd be willing to. Are you kidding? You don't like publicity any more in your racket than I do in mine. You better give in, Hunter. I can make an awful nuisance of myself. I can see that. All right, Craven, don't move. Now, what do you think you're going to do with that gun? Something the police commissioner couldn't do. I'm going to get rid of you, Craven. Now, listen, Hunter. If you don't put away that rod, I'll break you in two. Hey, where you are, Craven. I mean that. Are you super... Give me another bottle, Hazel. This one's gone. But thank oh, you, Oh, for Pete's sake, can a man get anything in his own home without a million arguments? Now get it. Uh, all right. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Answer that first. If it's mm. Sergeant Corbett, tell him I'm still sick and the doctor says I can't see anybody. Hello? Mrs. Walsh? That's right. This is Sergeant Corbett again. Oh, how are you, Sergeant? Can't complain. How's Frank? Just the same. Can I talk to him? I'm afraid not. He's he's asleep. Okay. Tell him I called, will you? I certainly will, Sergeant. Well? I think he's suspicious. What? He can't prove anything. What's all this about, Frank? What's what all about? Why are you avoiding Corbett? Ever since the night Craven disappeared... I told you I didn't want to talk about that. But you were with him. I was not. Craven got out of a car to see somebody. He left me on Lexington in 84th. I never saw him after that. Then why do they suspend you from the force? Because they're a bunch of thick-headed jerks. Frank, you're not telling the truth. What are you calling me? A liar? Oh. All right, Hazel, so you want to know what happened to Craven, do you? Well, I'll tell you. He was murdered. No. Yes. Now do you feel better? Who did it? I have no idea. Then how do you know he was murdered? I'm psychic. Frank, you've got to tell Sergeant Corbett. Hey, you're nuts. If you don't, they'll drop you from the force. Who cares? I do. What will we live on? Well, don't you worry about that, Hazel. From now on, it's easy street. And you do know who killed Craven. Yeah, that's right. Now, if at this party you'll appreciate me keeping my mouth shut. You're not thinking of blackmail. Well, huh? what am I thinking of, baby? Where's my coat? No, I won't let you go. Get your hands off me, Hazel. No, Frank. I said get your oh, hands get off. Me. Stop it, Frank. <laughs> You're choking me. Yes. I hate to break in on you like this, Mr. Hunter, but there's a party outside waiting to see you. I'm busy, Brock. Yes, I know, but I suggest you clear a little time for this boy. I would if I were in your position. But then you're not in my position, Brock. Oh, that's true. Just the same, you ought to see him. His name is Frank Walsh. He's a cop. So? So he was Jack Craven's sidekick. Craven? The dick who disappeared so mysteriously. Oh, of course. Will you see him? What have I got to lose? 
Hey, Walsh. Yeah. Come in here. Sit down, Mr. Walsh. My name is Hunter. Never mind the introduction, Hunter. Yeah. I know all about you. Not all, I trust. All. Um, when can I talk to you? What do you call what you're doing now? I mean, uh, alone. Would you be a good fellow, Brown? Why not? Nice knowing you, Walsh. Now, likewise. Now, what was it you had on your mind, Mr. Walsh? Well, last Saturday after you closed, you had a visitor up here. Did I? Yeah, yeah, a dick named Jack Craven. And you think I know something about his disappearance? I think you know everything about it. You see, I was outside when Craven went in to shake you down. A few minutes afterward, I heard a shot, so I beat it to the car. But 20 minutes later, I saw you coming out of here alone. So you put two and two together. And got four. You killed him, Hunter. I don't know what you did with his body. Then you might as well stop there, Mr. Walsh. Didn't you ever learn that to substantiate a charge of murder, there must be what the pulp writers call a corpus delicti? Now, look, Hunter, you're not brushing me off like this. We can settle this easily enough. I'm no pig like some guys. Give me 20 grand and you'll never hear from me again. I think it would be only fair to warn you, Mr. Walsh, that I have a distinct aversion to being blackmailed. Well, you better kick through, because if it's the last thing I do, I'll find Craven's body. I wish you luck. And if you experience too much difficulty, perhaps I can arrange to have you join him. Good day, sir. What's the matter, Sergeant? You look worried. I am, Mike. Still thinking about that craven mess? Yeah, a cheap, rotten grafter. Well, if you ask me, you've heard the last of that cookie. I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. You think he's dead? I don't know. Maybe he skipped. Who knows? It's funny about Frank Walsh having a nervous breakdown so soon afterwards. It's very funny. Turn right at the next corner. Where do you want to go? Over to see Frank Walsh. He lives a couple of blocks down. Didn't his wife tell you he's sick? Well, doctor's orders or not, I'm going to have a talk with that guy. Hey, hold it, Mike. Stop the car. What's the matter? I thought I saw something in the gutter. Back up. I guess I was... Hey, Sergeant. Yeah, turn on your spotlight. Oh, it's a drunk. Wouldn't you know it? Okay, let's get him. Can't leave him laying there. All right, mister, what do you think you're doing? Come on, on your feet, Buster. Uh, Give me a hand with him, Mike. Yeah, right. Let me go. Walsh. Uh, you're still to the eyeballs. I got a good mind to leave you. Oh, wait a minute, here. Sergeant. He isn't drunk. Look at your hand. Holy... Yeah, he's been shot. Shot. Listen, Walsh, who did it? 20 grand. Frank. It is. We'd better get a doctor. Oh, you'd be wasting your time, Sergeant. He's dead. Yes? I'm looking for Michael Waring. Falcon. Well, you made it. What? But I bet it was pretty difficult. What do you mean? And you couldn't do much looking through that veil. Oh. Come on in. Thanks. Just make yourself... What's the trouble? Well, I was going to ask you to make yourself comfortable, but uh, somehow I've got a feeling you don't quite trust me. I don't trust you? Well, why else would you carry a gun in your purse? What are you talking about? Well, don't tell me it's a compact, Angel. Because nothing Elizabeth Arden ever turned out was shaped like that. Is that the gun that killed Frank Walsh? Killed Walsh? Yeah, your husband. You're crazy. Aren't you Hazel Walsh? No. Well, lift your veil. Well? Who told you who I was? Well, it doesn't take an Einstein to figure that out. The police are looking for Hazel Walsh in connection with her husband's murder. So when a heavily veiled woman carrying a heater walks in on a private detective 12 hours later... The chances are she didn't come to consult him for pleasure. I didn't kill Frank, Mr. Waring. I was with Sergeant Corbett when we found him. He named you as his killer. I didn't do it. You had a motive. If you mean his insurance policy, no, I'm I not talking about money. And according to Corbett, Frank's favorite indoor sport was bouncing you around. That's not true. It'll be easy enough to prove. But Mr. Waring, I swear I didn't kill Frank. Well, you've got nothing to hide. Who are you calling? Sergeant Corbett. We're going over and have a talk with him. Put down that phone. Now, look, Mrs. Walsh. Put it down. 
If you want me to work for you... No, I... thanks. I've just changed my mind. Now, look, you're acting like a six-year-old. Now, I'm going to call the police. And I say you're going to do nothing of the kind. Oh. You see what I mean? Pleasant dreams, Mr. Waring. <laughs> It's lighter bodied. It's super fine. It's Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft salad dressing products. When the Kraft Foods Company puts a new product on the market, you can be sure that it's not just another product of its kind, but that there's something really new and different about it. And that's exactly what you'll discover in Kraft Salad Oil. Not just a new salad oil, but a new kind of salad oil. Kraft salad oil is a lighter-bodied oil. Lighter-bodied to blend smoothly and perfectly with the other ingredients. And the reason Kraft salad oil is lighter-bodied is that it's super-fined. Yes, super-fined by a special process created by Kraft. Don't wait to try this wonderful new salad oil in those distinctive homemade salad dressings you make, those wonderful chiffon cakes you bake, in every recipe you have that requires liquid shortening. Remember... It's lighter body. It's super fine. And it's at your grocer's now. Get Kraft salad oil in either the pint or quart size tomorrow. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Mike was lulled to sleep by Hazel Walsh. And now, as we find Mike, he's recuperating in Ed's luncheonette under the tender administrations of Sergeant Corbett. Hey, how about some service here? What will it be, Sergeant? A cup of java for me and a couple of aspirin for my friend here. What's the matter, Mike? Got a headache? Yes. Temper, temper. I get my hands on that Hazel Walsh. And you're not going to work for her? Of course I am. I just want to teach her you don't go around slugging people who are trying to help. You're making a mistake. Oh, now, look, Sergeant, I tell you, she didn't kill her husband. And why did she bop you when you were going to call me? Well, because she was panicky. That still doesn't explain why Frank named her as his killer. But he didn't, really. He said something about 20 grand. Maybe he wanted to leave a message for her. About 20 grand? Well, why not? Suppose he was trying to tell her something. You're crazy. Now look, Sergeant, Walsh was a grafter. I don't like that kind of talk. Well, I don't blame you, but you've got to face the facts. There are always a couple of rotten apples in every barrel. How many times have you had Frank Walsh and Jack Craven on the carpet? You just couldn't make it stick, that's all. Go on. Well, my guess is that Walsh tried to shake down Hunter, and Hunter let him have it. But why would Walsh expect that kind of payoff from Hunter just to let him keep running his joint? He wouldn't. But he might to keep a murder quiet. What are you talking about? Walsh must have known... Who murdered Jack Craven? Well, he went there last night for payoff. And he got it. Hmm. Well, assuming you're right, now all we have to do is find the one party in New York he tried it on. Well, that shouldn't be so hard, Corbett. There was Walters and Craven's beat. The east side from 76 to 85th. Nine blocks. All right, who's operating a new joint in that district? What makes you think this is a new operator? Human nature. Once a man allows himself to be shaken down, the odds are he'll go on that way without squawking. So my guess would be that Craven got his when he tried his graft on a new customer. You know, Mike, sometimes I think you've got the makings of a pretty good detective. Well, thank you. And when did Craven disappear? Four days ago. Okay, then we can narrow it down even finer. Craven would probably give this boy a chance to operate a week or two, so he'd have some idea what to charge. Now, who do you know that opened a joint around the middle of March? Well, I heard rumors that a guy named Hunter opened a club around the 14th. But every time a raiding party gets near the place, they fold up their tables and run. Okay, let's see if we can run faster. Come on, Mike. Get away from that wheel. Can I tell you about my assistant, Sergeant? Some other time. See any sign of Hunter around? No. What time have you got? Quarter to 11. I suppose we try his office. Where is it? I think you go through this door. Yeah. 
That room down the hall. Want me to flash my badge? No, let's keep this unofficial for the moment. You can close up the joint tomorrow. We've got a murder to worry about. Come in. Hello, Brock. Well, well, the Falcon, isn't it? Uh huh. Are we interrupting anything? Nothing that can't wait. Oh, uh, who's your friend, Mike? Well, sorry, Mr. Brock, Mr. Corbett. Hi. Glad to know you. Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? We'd like to see Hunter. And... What for? Well, I just want to congratulate him on the establishment he's got here. Well, I'll tell him when I see him. But could you arrange for us to do that? I'm afraid not. Hunter's out of town. Uh, any idea where? No, I think he said he might take a little run down to Mexico. When was this? Oh, about a week ago. Funny, I would have sworn I saw him in the street Friday night. Well, oh, you're imagining things. <laughs> it must be. Of course, if he's been gone a week, he uh, wouldn't know anything about Walsh and Craven, huh? Walsh and Craven? Those two cops who ran into bad luck. Oh, seems to me I read something about that. Of course, that's all you'd know about it, huh? Of course. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Brock. I'll be seeing you. Yes, do that. Coming, Corbett? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. So long, Brock. Boy, you really handle that brilliantly. Shut up. Listen, Mike. Shut up and cover me in case anyone comes. You know, it's not polite to peek at keyholes. I know, but it can be awfully informative. What's he doing? Making a phone call. Who's he calling? Well, if you keep quiet, I'll find out. Hello, is that you, Mr. Hunter? This is Brock. No, business is all right, but some of the customers could be better. You know who was just asking for you? Where? Yes, that's right. Mike Waring, the Falcon, and there was a cop with him. Well, of course I'm not making a mistake. You ask me? All right. Wait a minute. Someone just walked in. Oh, it's all right, Brock. It's only us. I told you we'd be back. Oh, now you went and hung up on Mr. Hunter. That's not nice, Brock. He's going to be awfully hurt. What do you want, Waring? Well, I think you owe Mr. Hunter an apology. And what would be nicer than if we all went over together while you paid it? <laughs> Brock, what floor does Hunter live on? Four, but you won't find him there. That's right, Mike. We forgot. Hunter's down in Mexico. Okay, be smart. But I tell you, I wasn't speaking to him. Cut it out, Brock. We heard you as plain as could be. You're wrong. I was talking to a girlfriend of mine. That's whose name, by an odd coincidence, was Mr. Hunter. Okay, where do we go now? It's apartment 4C. Oh, well, that should be it. Ah, sure enough. Walter Hunter. All right, Sergeant, where are your keys? Suppose he's inside? No, not a chance. Must have skipped after Brock here warned him. But I don't think he could get too far in those ten minutes. He got far enough, Mike. Hey, what's the matter with him? Well, if you don't know, Brock, take a good look at his face. That bullet hole ought to be a dead giveaway. Nah. Holy smoke. All right, Mike, out of the way. What's the matter? I want to see where Hunter was standing when he got it. Judging by the course of the bullet, he... Well, what do you know? Hey, there's a gun under that chair. Where? The one you're sitting on, Brock. What? Leave it alone. There may be prints. Okay. Isn't that a police special? Yeah. And I'll take even money that it's Frank Walsh's service revolver. His wife was awfully careless, Mike. Oh, now, don't tell me you think... Well, what do you think? I don't know, but at least I'm not going around making wild guesses. How do you know it wasn't suicide? Are you kidding? Well, it could be. Don't talk like a chump. We had nothing on Hunter. Why should he blow his brains out? Well, why should Hazel Walsh do it for him? Maybe she figured that he knocked off her husband. Oh, well, then you admit she wasn't guilty of that. I admit nothing Excuse of Excuse me, gentlemen, but can I get a word in? What do you want, Brock? There's a hunk of paper under Hunter's leg. Oh, never mind, Mike. I'll take care of that. Well, what is it? Give me a chance, will you? The home it may concern. I killed Jack Craven and Frank Walsh. Huh? I should like my remains to be cremated. Walter Hunter. <laughs> what do you say now, Sergeant? I say, don't sh me. There's someone at the door. Turn off the lights. There we are, Brock. Okay, pal, what do you want? Let go. Behave. Let go. Oh. I said behave. Turn on the lights, Mike. Right. Hmm. Crummy looking bum. Hey. You know him? Yeah, and I wish I didn't. This is Detective Jack Craven. Jack Craven? Yeah, my long-lost buddy. Tomorrow when you shop, don't forget about that wonderful new craft salad oil that's waiting for you at your grocer's right now. 
It's Kraft Salad Oil. The salad oil that's lighter bodied to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Lighter bodied because it's super fine. Try this wonderful new aid to kitchen artistry in your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. Remember, it's lighter bodied because it's super fine. Get Kraft Salad Oil. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Just five minutes have passed since Jack Craven made his dramatic entrance. And strangely enough, Sergeant Corbett doesn't seem any too pleased by his reappearance. Come on, Craven, start spilling. I want to hear you make like Niagara. I don't know what you're talking about, Sergeant. Why, you cheap little... Well, watch it, Corbett. You keep out of this, Mike. This is strictly departmental. How do you think all the other boys on the force feel? We work like dogs to make the public trust us. And along comes a rotten grafter like Craven and gives every honest cop a black eye. All right, but there are strangers present. Oh, don't mind me, folks. I'm broad-minded. You'll keep your mouth shut, Brock, if you know what's good for you. I'll be as quiet as a mouse. All right, Craven, I asked you a question. Let go. Answer me. Why did you kill Hunter? I didn't. Oh, then why did you come back to his apartment? I didn't come back. That was the first time I was there. Don't give me that. Uh, Can I put my two cents in, Sergeant? Go ahead. You've been gone for almost a week, Craven. Where have you been? Los Angeles. Why'd you go there? None of your business. Listen, Craven, you answer Waring's questions just as if I was asking them. Why did you go there? I wanted to see my relatives. And you certainly didn't travel on the Super Chief. From the look of it, I'd say you did most of your riding in a cattle car. What's the matter? Couldn't Hunter afford any better transportation? Hunter had nothing to do with it. Your pal Frank Walsh doesn't support your story. Walsh? Did he stool on me? What do you think? You had a fight with Hunter, didn't you? Yeah, he plugged me. How about what? That doesn't matter. He dumped me in a cattle car when I came to. I was in L.A. Why didn't you wire us? I had no dough. You could have done it collect. I didn't want to involve the department. Well, that's understandable. Especially if you wanted to come back to kill Hunter. I tell you, I didn't kill him. I just got into town tonight. That doesn't prove a thing. Where were you at 10.15? Why? Because according to the coroner's report I just got, that's when Hunter was killed. Now listen, sir. Don't start that suicide routine again, Mike. If Hunter wrote that note, he would have known darn well he hadn't killed Craven here. Where were you at 1015, Craven? Being chased all over the freight yards by some railroad dicks. What? If you don't believe me, you can call the yards and check. And don't think I won't. Uh, just a minute, Sergeant. Does this mean you're riding off Hazel Walsh as a suspect? No. Well, then I'd like you to double the force looking for her. Let me understand you, Mike. You think Craven here is telling the truth? I do. Then Mrs. Walsh is our party. Oh, I didn't say that. I ask you, Brock, ain't it enough to drive a guy bats? Oh, don't ask him, Sergeant. If this thing is driving you crazy, who do you think is responsible? Just what is that supposed to mean, Waring? Just what it sounded like, Brock. You killed Walsh and Hunter. I don't know how I can ever repay you, Mike. Oh, forget it, Hazel. I'm only glad it ended the way it did. So it was Brock who killed my husband. Yeah, but he didn't mean to frame you. He thought it would take care of Hunter... But when Frank booted your name to Sergeant Corbett and myself, that upset his plans. But why did Brock want to frame his boss? Well, Hunter had a very nice thing in the club. And Brock figured he was capable enough to handle it with Hunter out of the way. I still don't see why he murdered Frank. According to that note, Brock thought that Hunter had killed Craven. Yes, but that didn't do him any good because there was no trace of Craven's body. And a corpus delecti is essential in any frame. That is why it was necessary for him to supply a body that would lead directly to Hunter. But Frank never even mentioned the man's name to me. Well, Brock had no way of knowing that. Then when it looked like all his plans were going for naught, he wrote that suicide note and killed Hunter, thinking that would tie up all the loose ends. Well, where did Brock give himself away? When Sergeant Corbett and I were at the club. Before we went into the office to see Brock, I asked Corbett the time. He said it was a quarter to eleven. A few minutes after that, we eavesdropped on Brock, talking to Hunter on the phone. What's wrong with that? Well, it was a conversation that never could have taken place. According to the autopsy report, Hunter was killed at 10.15, a half hour earlier. And that business on the phone was... staged by Brock to give himself an alibi. Hmm. He felt pretty sure that Corbett and I were listening in. So, does that answer all your questions? Mm Mm-hmm. I'll suppose you answer one of mine. Hmm? Where did you bury yourself so that the entire New York police force couldn't find you? (laughs) I stayed with my sister, Lenore. Your sister, Lenore, huh? Yes. She looked like you. (laughs) She's much prettier. Well, if there's one thing I've learned from this case, never to believe any testimony based on hearsay evidence. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I don't know what I can do to convince you. 
Oh, that's very easy, Angel. Uh, just give me her address and let me see for myself. <laughs> Folks, let's talk about enjoyment. That's a pleasant subject, isn't it? Specifically, I'd like to say a few words about candy enjoyment. The kind you find in Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels. Kraft Caramels are tops in delicious good eating. Here's the reason why. The Kraft folks spent years developing fine caramels, making them chewy, soft, and flavorful, making them good so you'd enjoy them. And Kraft Caramels have plenty of nourishing milk and other pure ingredients in them, so they're good for you, too. Next time you're at the grocery store, pick up a big pound bag of Kraft Caramels. And at your candy counter, get the six-piece bar for a nickel. Kraft Caramels come in regular caramel flavor and in chocolate flavor. Both flavors are delightful. The important thing to remember is this. Whenever you want real candy enjoyment, be sure you get Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels. The Case of the Unwelcome Wife. The Case of the Unwelcome Wife. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that when a girl pretends to be married to an already married man, the results can be murder. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your local newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft. Food Company. Raymond Massey and Shirley Booth star on Theater Guild tonight on NBC. If you'd like for me to get you a shout out, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. Leave us a donation. We'll get it up here for you. Just tell us who you want it to. You, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, spouse, whatever. And we'll get it up here. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. you got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>